and welcome to Cape House Cooking. Well, it's mid-July here on Cape Cod and everybody's shellfishing, clamming, cohogging, just bringing home the uh, fruits of the sea, so to speak. So today I'm going to make stuffed cohogs. Um, people call them stuffies. And uh, I've got my beautiful uh, cohogs here that Tom went out and uh, gathered up uh, around Buzzards Bay and they look beautiful. I'm going to give them a little washing up uh, before we start. First thing I want to do though is preheat my oven to 350 degrees. All right, and let's wash these up. Hmm. All right, well I gave them a little scrub to uh, get kind of the silt off of them. These live uh, under the uh, layer of the um, bottom of the uh, bay floor. So they get a little mucky and uh, they need a little cleaning up before we begin. So while the oven's preheating, I want to toast up my uh, torn up bread and get that a little bit crunchy. Uh, I think about nine, eight or nine, eight to 10 slices of bread. And we're just going to tear it up on this sheet pan and uh, stick it in the oven. People love cohogging around here. They just head down to the beach and if the shellfishing open sign is up, um, they can go out there with their rake or even finger call it finger fishing, just uh, dig around in the sand and find these beautiful cohogs. Um, the bigger ones are nice uh, for, st for stuffing, uh, give you lots of room to put the filling in. So I have six of them here and when I break them in half I'll end up with 12 uh, stuffed stuff cohogs. So. All right, we're going to just put this in the oven to toast it up, dry it out. Go. And I don't really time that. I just know when it smells like toast, the whole house will smell like toast. Um, it's time. So I've got one large uh, red onion. I like the red onion. It's a little bit milder than, say, the yellow onion. And I'm going to use two cloves of garlic. So. There's a pile of onion and then two cloves of garlic. Now I'm just going to saute the onion and the garlic in two tablespoons of butter. Over medium heat. I'll put in our butter. And to that, um, once that cooks for about five minutes, I'm going to add two cups of ground linguisa. Um, you don't have to add linguisa. Everybody here seems to really love linguisa on Cape Cod. Um, we have a lot of Portuguese influence and uh, just gives it a really nice, rich, uh, little, little spicy, uh, salty flavor. And if you want to reduce the salt in this recipe, because I do notice they are a tiny bit salty, if you're trying to watch your sodium, I would use the um, unsalted two tablespoons of butter instead of regular. Butter. Meanwhile, I'm gonna put about two inches of water in my big pot that has a lid um, and steam my clams uh, and just until they open. Oh, that looks good. I'll bring that to a boil. And my Butter is melting, getting ready. I'm gonna check on this a couple more minutes. Ooh, it's hot. Steamed up my glasses. Well, it has been a hot, dry July here on Cape Cod, that is for sure. All right, that looks ready. all of our onion, garlic, 
and that onion starts looking kind of shiny and translucent. You know, it's softening up. It's going to be a milder flavor and softer texture, which is what we're looking for. So we're just going to cook that for about five minutes. Then we're going to add this, cook it for about another five minutes. I'm also going to add some oregano and some Italian seasoning to our linguiça mixture. And my oven just preheated to 350. So that's underway. So I'm just going to put in about a half a teaspoon each of oregano and Italian seasoning. I just like to squish it a little bit while it's going in, kind of activate all those flavors. Now I'm going to add my two cups of ground linguiça. I'm just going to stir this around until the linguiça is all cooked. Essentially, when you go to put these in the oven, everything's been pre-cooked. So you're just heating them up all together. All right. So our water's boiling, and I can add my quahogs now. Just lay them in there. Put the cover on, and about five minutes, five to ten minutes. The big trick is just don't overcook them. As soon as you get them overcooked, they become tough and chewy. It's a very delicate um, process. It's a very tiny piece of uh, meat you're getting out of that big shell, so you don't want to overcook them. They e very easily get tough. Well, it's starting to smell like toast in here. Oh, yeah. Let me get this out. Oh, wow. Yep. Beautiful. All nice and toasted, dried out. So we're just going to pop this in a bowl. All right. And this linguiça is all cooked up with our vegetables, our onion and our garlic, so that's fantastic. Yep. So once it starts, once it's you get the clams in and it's they're boiling again, you want to uh, reduce the heat to medium. And then you're going to cook it for, like I said, about five, ten minutes. So you want to make sure you reduce your heat to medium to try and keep it from uh, over, over steaming, over boiling onto your stove. Um, so many people say, oh, this recipe is uh, making stuffed quahogs is so difficult and so messy, um, so time consuming. And um, honestly, I, I don't feel it's too bad. Um, I can do it pretty quickly and it doesn't really cause too much of a mess. So. I think once you get the hang of it, doing it, you know, a couple of times, it'll be like you could do it in your sleep. So that one opened up, but we're still waiting on the rest of these, so we'll cover them back up. So a little trick I do, um, I want to, um, once those are done, I want to strain the clam juice, the broth, uh, through some cheesecloth to um, just to get any kind of little bits of shells or, you know, dirt or whatever might be in there. I just cut a little piece of cheesecloth. Get a bowl. And uh, I just use a little bit of tape to hold it in place. Uh, I don't have an, uh, if you had a rubber band that big, that would work, but I don't. So I just use a little pieces of this painter's tape. Works pretty well. There we go. 
Oops, there we go. A little boil over. Try to avoid that. So you can see they pop open beautifully and we get them out right away. I like to get them out of the shell and uh, onto a cutting board quickly. Oh, that's a little hot, hot juice there squirted me. Um, just so they don't overcook in the shell anymore. Just, I like to get them off and cooling as quickly as I can. So I've got them all on my cutting board ready to go. And this little um, piece here called the foot. So I'm just going to um, remove that and break these apart, give them a little rinse, and uh, then we can uh, have them all ready for stuffing. And you just pull off this little foot. There you go. Makes a nice... Nice clean little... Uh, container just put your stuffing in so when you break them off little bits of the shell can can uh, break off too that's why I like to give them a nice rinse after I do this part I don't want any hard bits of shell in my stuffed quahogs that's a no-no Mainly because I don't want to break a tooth. All right, they're all done. going to get rid of this foot and the little bits of shells. There we go. Yeah, I just give them a scrub. All right, these are washed up. And now, just going to dry them a little bit and line them up for stuffing. Boy, look at the beautiful purple on these. And that's what the Native Americans used for, for money. Um, they called it, they made... Uh, pieces of jewelry out of it and traded it and it was called wampum. So our local um, Wampanoag members would cohog and look at all the purple on that one. That would be quite a find. That is just a deep beautiful color. All right, beautiful. All right, and there's our 12. Okay. So we have our clams here we're going to chop up. And like I said, we're going to get some broth. So I should have uh, turned that off, but that's okay. 
So we're just going to strain this broth through the cheesecloth. That's it. This broth will give a beautiful uh, flavor to our clams. Just makes it even more, you know, that rich, beautiful, clammy, cohoggy flavor. All right. So now we're going to chop up our clams. You know, this is the neck, this black part. And um, I know, you know, you can eat them, but for some reason, I take it off. I just don't like the idea of this black thing being in in my food. <laughs> so anyway, I just removed the little neck part, but you can certainly eat it. And you don't have to remove it. I try to take off anything that really seems tough or, you know, that won't be easy to uh, chew. And then you just give these a rough chop. You don't want to make them uh, too chopped up. Um, I know someone I know said they tried putting them in a food processor and it just made them very mushy. Um, so, you know, people like to find a nice big piece of tender clam. So that's what we're trying to do here. Get some nice pieces of tender clam. Ah, that looks fantastic. So we're going to add our mixture of our linguisa, onion, and garlic into our breadcrumbs. Mm-mm, that is delicious. Let's see. Mix that around a little bit. And then, as we get this going, that's wonderful. We can add in our clams, toss these in. They have a nice amount of moisture in them still. You know, it's very personal, you know, how you like your recipe. I mean, obviously, this recipe you can. Put in celery if you wanted to, I'll leave the linguisa out, you, you know, you can make them more moist, less moist. Uh, but this is the recipe that uh, we've been using and uh, seems to do pretty well. So I have this combined and now all I'm going to do is just moisten it up with this strained clam broth. There we go. So I think we'll start with like a cup. up a little bit. Oh, those are my feet. Yep. Okay. All right, so we've put in one cup of broth. Just kind of mixing that around, trying to get a sense of how moist this is going to be. And the more you stir it, um, the toast gets softer, absorbing more of the moisture. And uh, you don't want to put in more liquid before necessary. Because once you get it too soggy, you can't come back. So this is looking pretty lovely, but thinking maybe just a touch more of the broth. I'll try like a quarter cup more. Mm. 
don't want to go overboard. You know, finding that sweet spot between not too dry and not too wet. And this is feeling pretty good. Sort of like making meatballs, you know, you just kind of have to get a sense of it and, you know, feel the texture. And also the great thing about this is that everything in here has been pre-cooked. So, I mean, you can taste it. Mmm. That is beautiful. All right, so now I'm just going to fill these shells and we will be all set. All right, now for the stuffing. Now, I know some people use a um, cookie, um, you know, cookie scoop, but I just find this is fine. These are big. Maybe if they were smaller. I'm just going to fill them all up. And then I can adjust the amounts at the end. I want to make sure each has some nice pieces of clam in there. Boy, what do you think of that, huh? This is my favorite part. <laughs> well, that kneading them. Okay, I can go back around now that I've got them all mostly filled and just add a little bit here and there to even them out. I don't want to press down too hard, just sort of gently mound it around. You know, you don't want it to be dense and heavy. That one's got a lot of stuffing in there. That's a beauty. And this one too. Boy, oh, heavy. Heavy's good. These were nice big quahogs. And they're gonna give you a nice appetizer or you know, main course with a cup of chowder. Um, you can also make clam chowder, which we should do next next show. Got a great recipe for clam chowder. All right, and I think we're about done. I don't want to miss anything in here. Okay. Oh boy, beautiful pieces of clams. And our oven is all preheated, so these are ready to be baked. So we can serve these up with a little bit of uh, lemon and some fresh parsley if we want. So I've cut up a couple of lemon slices and now I'm just going to run out to the garden and get some fresh parsley that I've been growing out there. All right, just have a few flat leaf parsley leaves here. So in the 15 minutes it takes to cook them, you can clean up all the little pots and uh, big pot and fry pan and um, bowls that you use to make these. And honestly, it's a quick cleanup. Nothing sticks to anything. And um, I'm not sure why people find this recipe so messy or so daunting. Couple tips, do turn down the heat once they, the, the uh, cohogs are boiling to medium and hang around the uh, stove pretty close um, in that five to ten minutes it takes for them to open because they may over uh, boil over and you want to kind of stop that because it does make your stove a little messy but it does just wipe right up with uh, hot water and some soap. Oh, there's the timer, 15 minutes. Let's see how they're doing. Ooh hoo hoo, beautiful. Oh, now that's some stuffed cohogs. Mmm, it's got a little bit of uh, crunch on the top, and let's see how they are. I like to arrange them on a nice platter.
Mm-hmm. Boy, those are pretty. They're a sight to see. Plate. And a fork. I am ready for these. There we go. Oh, which one should I pick? Hmm, how about this one? Some big juicy clams on top. I'm going to give it a little squirt of lemon, just a little bit. Nice and a little sprinkle of some flat leaf parsley. Oh, isn't that just the best? Ooh, I love that linguisa in there. Clam, the onion, the garlic. Now I just, the trick is don't get so excited you burn your mouth. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Wow. So flavorful. So much beautiful clam flavoring. Mmm. And they are tender. Mm -mm -mm. No hard, chewy clams here. These are fresh quahogs from Buzzards Bay. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Cape House Cooking. And uh, I hope you get out there, get yourself some quahogs, and try out this recipe. And add whatever you like to it, make it your own.